Welcome to Progressive Retail. I'm your host, Corey Mosley. On today's show, I'm sitting down with Brian Archie, Director of Analytics and Insights at Cars.com to talk about one of my favorite buzzwords for 2017, attribution. Let's get started. Brian, thanks for joining the show today. Thanks for having me, Corey. You're welcome. Now, I've got my 2017 buzzwords that I've been talking about, right? Everybody's going to be a game changer. Uh, uh, transparency is a big one. Disruption yeah. is a big one. And the other one's attribution. So that's kind of what we're talking about here today. And when I think about attribution, I want you to define that for the audience today that may not be familiar with it or taking action on it, other than its actual definition by term. What does it mean to people in the automotive industry right now, and why is it getting so much you know, press and coverage and being talked about? Absolutely, great question. Uh, attribution is essential right now in a lot of industries, not mm. just automotive, sure. I think because consumer behavior has changed, mm. and uh, technology has changed, and consumers are less likely to give away information to self-identify when they're dealing with a vendor or a dealership now, okay. um, and, or even a third party. Now, less likely. Now that's interesting because I think about all of the things that we thought people would never do, right? So, it, it, you know, the old memes are out there about, and, and kind of the theories about, you know, the idea that you never should talk to a stranger. Now we use an app to call strangers to come get us right. and drive us around, right? So all these different things. The idea that many, many years ago, it was laughable that you would put your credit card information into a box and a computer and, and buy something that way. So I feel like, you, you feel like, and you're the analytics guy, so yeah. you know better than me, but people are hiding more than they were before? They or? Wanna, I think they want to have that conversation when they're ready. Okay. So if, if you're talking about a, a ride share, um, you're ready for that ride. You want right, to pick sure. it, you're not going to hesitate. Sure. Uh, if you're talking about buying a car, it's a little different. Mm -hmm. I think consumers mm -hmm. don't want to have uh, to be hounded or, right. or have those conversations too early when they don't feel confident in their What decisions. percentage of information that comes across your site by way of leads, like in consumer information, would you say is bad? Like where, the where, where they want to get to what they want and they want to get more information, but they, don't, but they don't give all of their information for it. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I think you're going to get a lot of, a lot of what we see in our mm. data as, as questions. It's, it's not so much a, an indicator of intent okay. that they're ready to purchase the car. It's, is, is this vehicle the right price? Is this right. You, can, can we talk before I come in? I sure. don't want you to know really who I am yet. Right. Um, and, and what interests me more is the, are those consumers that aren't. Right, they're right. not raising their hands. They're right. visiting multiple sites, and they're doing a lot of research beforehand. And we, we're seeing and they're that buying, in their site. and they're buying. And now it's the question of who who gets credit for that, because there's hundreds of millions of dollars tied to, to that. Now I keep my buzzer here. If you know my buzzer, my buzzer. If you've ever seen the show before, yeah. I have this thing of like, don't be ridiculous. And I hit it. So if you say something, I'm going to call. Yeah, don't, be don't be ridiculous. Or, I'm going to hit the button. Were you about but, to but, before? No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> but but since we're truth telling today, yeah, yeah, you know. We'd agree that there's two sides of this conversation. Absolutely. There's the proactive and the reactive reason why a company your size would get would take interest in attribution. And a lot of that is driven because there's so many ways for a consumer to come in the marketing funnel, right? Yeah. Who ultimately is getting the credit? Because that drives marketing decisions, that drives spend decisions. And honestly, nobody wants to be on the back end. You don't want to be doing all this work and have somebody. It's no different than in the corporate world, right? You, you got the junior doing all the work, and then somebody the swoops in, the senior swoops in, says, oh, wasn't this a great right. idea? It was my idea. That's attribution, really, isn't it, when you think about it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think it's interesting in this, per, in this conversation. Yeah. Um, when, when I look at it, 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 in order to tie back the credit, it's mm -hmm. two parts, right? Okay. Yes, it, it's a, there's a little bit of defense, but really it's defense so that we can service our, our website and our consumers the best way. Sure. So if we're not doing things that are driving the intent, if we're not doing things that are driving vehicle sales or right. people to physically walk onto the dealership's lot right. or to send the email leader make the phone call, um, then we're failing the consumer and we're failing the dealer mm. at the same time. So I think the onus on the third party uh, is to be responsible for creating the best exper experience right. for that consumer. And I think attribution helps us do that too. So it's looking inward in the organization as well as looking out to the, to the dealer community and saying, here's what we've done and we know that and we're right. going to make changes to improve that experience so that more consumers can get to you. Now something I thought was interesting because oh, I came, I had the opportunity to participate in, in a summit that you guys did. Yeah. I thought it was very interesting. One of the things we were talking about, we were talking about the Super Bowl and we were talking about the impact of a third party, that being an OEM, right, running an ad 
and then having people choose to go to your site for the actual information and now to start that funnel conversation. Yeah. Now, when I think about uh, metrics and we think about attribution and who's driving it, because really they're putting you in the driver's seat in those situations, to now trickle that down, get it in the dealer's hands to take action. In that attribution, what are the metrics that dealers should be paying attention to? Oh, that's great. Uh, there are a lot of new metrics that we should be looking at, a lot of old metrics that we should continue to look at. Um, Historically, we've looked a lot at volume, right? Okay. If I get more, it's better. If I right. have more VDP views, if I have more email leads. Right. Uh, but I think new metrics are emerging, and you're going to see more of this, around quality. And determining quality by engagements. So what kind of, what are people doing when they're seeing my listings? Right. If they're coming to a cars.com, if they're coming to somebody else, if they're coming in through a, a paid media spend, and they're seeing my vehicle inventory, what are they doing? Uh, what, are the, what are the different things that they take action on? And then can we correlate that back right. to vehicle sales or the likelihood to turn the vehicle? And I think that's, that's the new metrics, the new frontier. And it's, it's not all that scary because it's, right. we're dealing with the same base metrics. Sure. We're just saying, let's take a step back and stop. No one should be juicing the system here, right? right. Let's look at what well, and people I, are and doing. You certainly don't want to be on the back end of that, right? I oh, mean, no. Right, you yeah. don't want, it's, it's, again, it's, it becomes a, it becomes a credit factor and, and having that make a decision. You know, I find, I find a lot of times there's still a lot of gut decisions that get made out there. Yeah. And I've literally had that. I had a dealer come up to me and say, oh, you know what, I'm going to cancel so-and-so, right? Insert, insert any company you want. I'm going to cancel so-and-so. And I would make a statement like, okay, well, you know, what, how are they help? What's the problem? What are they, are they not converting? Is it not? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. But my gut tells me to do it. Or I've been in these meetings, I've been working with dealers for, thir for over a decade. Uh, I'll come to these meetings, Corey, we need to cut the budget by $10,000. Right, well, let's just go for whoever's the most expensive. Let's just one, two, three, rabbit in the hat, yep. like all these different things. So I think that's part of the reason why companies like yours, um, which unless you've been living under a rock here, right. you know, you're not, this isn't, uh, the, 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 this isn't the feature of the new company nobody's ever heard of here, right? <laughs> We're having a conversation because you aggregate a ton of data. You're, you're you know, yep. uh, what's the dealer count up to now? Uh, we're around 20,000. So, I mean, you're co so much coverage there. So there's so much, I mean, you're really a tastemaker in, in essence because you're able to create predictions and I'm gonna ask you for one in a minute, but you're able to keep create predictions, right? So yep. at the end of the day, yes, we want dealers to make smarter decisions, but again, I go back to the protection. I, I, I just wanna make sure we're on the same page here. Right. That it is a protection factor. And it's also really knowing where your dollars are going because you get a false False, and I deal with this from a consulting end. You get a false positive or a false negative. You go on the CRM system, yeah, right? Yeah, lead, absolutely. sale, lead, sale, yeah. right? Very simple in terms of how a CRM will break that out. Very simple with a phone call right. or with an email. Lead. Now it's a 90 day customer. You've been yeah. working them for 180 days. God knows where they've been. What else? What These really are the answers, the right? Yeah. These are the answers that attribution is designed to to focus on. Yeah, yes. and, it, and it is a buzzword. Okay. It's a fancy buzzword right. for us, but uh, it encompasses basically that. How do you really get to the value and what drove that decision of intent for the consumer to show up and shop with you right. or to give you the opportunity to sell? Um, and yeah, I, I mean, that's where rubber hits the road for us. Right. We need to make sure we're on the cutting edge of that and mm -hmm. it does not benefit any of the third parties out there um, to try to cover any of that up. Right. It, it benefits us to say, let's find out exactly what right. those behaviors are so we can help make that process easier. So speaking of cutting edge, so now is the time that Q1, you know, is the time when everybody's oh, yeah. setting the tone for what's going to happen, what's good. So what, what do you got? I mean, what, what is new? What's exciting? What do dealers need to know about? Not, not what do they need to buy, but what do they need to know about? I think you're going to see a lot, and, and this is where we're headed now and very fast, you're going to see a lot of locking arms in the industry. Okay. You're going to see a lot of players come up who can help us crack the code mm. on attribution because it is very complex. And, and to your point earlier right. about uh, dealers and their guts, I, they've got great intuition out there. They've been doing right. this business for a long time. They know their business. I think the technology of, of the space and digital has gotten ahead mm. to an area where we all need to band together in a way and help. Right. Um, and so you're going to see that from us. You're gonna, probably going to see that from, from other partners in the space coming together to tell a, a better story. Gotcha. Um, 
personally and, and mm -hmm. what my team's focused on mm -hmm. is let's dig into the new metrics okay. or uh, refurbishing the old okay. to give a little more alternative context. Facts? Alternative facts? Alternative facts. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. no. Okay. Real facts. Okay, okay, uh, got it. More got it. context, okay. Okay, more that's good. actionable, okay. uh, more insights directly to the customer, to, okay. uh, to the dealership. So, so you get to cheat a little bit here on this question that I ask everybody on the show. Uh, my closing question is always this. Um, now, because you, you work at a behemoth and you have access to all this data, you get to cheat a little bit here. But the question is, if you looked in your crystal ball, yeah. what predictions are you going to make about where the business is going or the future of the business? Well, what's on the horizon oh. that nobody see that they don't know right now, or somebody might even go, no, that's not going to happen. Oh, but it is. I don't know if anyone would doubt it. I mean, honestly, I think the crystal ball is showing what what we've all been seeing in mm -hmm. terms of where mobile's taking us, okay. and where uh, physical touch points are life taking us. Life on the us. phone and, and life on the phone and location-based right. uh, measurement, location-based uh, ad serving mm -hmm. communications. Mm -hmm. I think we're looking at a whole new way for consumers to talk to dealers and for those people to come together and make the, that car sale. And I think it's all happening on mobile. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Brian, thank you for joining us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. It was, it was absolutely fantastic. I Thanks appreciate again. it. You're thank welcome. you. You're welcome. Well, that's our show for today, but here's a question. Why aren't you and your team training with me? You need to check out our on-demand training, testing, and certification program, Mosley 24-7. This online training system equips your team with the new school skills they need to start selling more cars right now. Visit Mosley247.com for more information. Also, if you have an industry colleague that could benefit from this message, please share this video with them. This has been another episode of Progressive Retail with Corey Mosley, exclusively on the CBT Automotive Network. I'll see you next week.